Okay, sure, and uh, welcome everyone. It's afternoon, the full uh, council meeting. Here we are in February, still 28th of February 2023. Welcome to uh, members of the public and staff, councillors, Deputy Mayor, and also um, externally, we've got Councillor Fletcher online. Got a Councillor Fletcher and anyone who may be looking at us. Are we live streaming around the world? Recorded. Recorded. Okay, cool. Recorded. Very good. So lovely to have you all here. Councillor Lachlan, uh, just asking if you could give us a carrot here for the. Karakia Timata, I honore, I grodea, kite atua, maingarongo ki te whenua, whakaaro pai e ki ngā tangata katoa, ake ake, amani. Thank you very much, Councillor Lachlan. Apologies for today, we have uh, Councillor Westerman uh, is the only vacant seat. So can I just have a move in? Councillor Westerman, thank you, Councillor. Manton, seconded by Councillor Park. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, aye. carry. Item number three, any conflicts of interest pertaining to the items today? Aye. No, we will carry on then. Uh, item number four, confirmation of the minutes, the ordinary council meeting, 7th of February. Any points of clarification of those minutes, please? No, could I have a move for those minutes, please? Thank you, Councillor Lachlan, seconded by uh, Councillor Taylor, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carry. 17th of February, uh, the ordinary council meeting that was held on the 17th of February. Um, any points of clarification or corrections of those minutes, please? No, could I have a mover, please, for those minutes? Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Seeing the vote, Councillor Lachlan, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carry. Thank you. 5.1 uh, is uh, members. Portfolio updates. Who wants to go first? I've got um, Councillor Westerman's uh, table one, here, which is here. I'll read those first. Uh, so, uh, her portfolio's organisations, uh, environmental and plain, uh, climate change. She attended the Botanical Society annual barbecue for volunteers. And went out to Manga Kino, uh, the representative group out there, community services, attended the Wairua House meeting, uh, and attended the Kasha Bay Residents Association meeting. So, Councillor Westerman, um, Councillor Truman, shall we start with you? Have you got anything to report on your portfolio, Kirsty? Um, other than what's there um, tonight, I'm also going to a, a hui at Pawakani Marae, so that's in regards to the Mankino Lakefront consultation. Um, and from there, we will look at um, organising a consultation to happen specifically at the Marae. Um, yeah, I went to my first Federated Farmers hui. Um, yeah, it was quite interesting to, to see that and just to see the um, plans to, to support uh, Hawke's Bay and Yes, um, you know, what they're going to do for the farmers there. Um, so that was, was really interesting. Um, and our extension to our Whakamaru um, water network is underway, and Toby's water should be going in later this month. Cool. Thank you, Councillor Chairman. Um, actually, going back to the list here, Councillor Hey, Christine, um, do you have to from economic and business? Um, just the message that I have shared with you during the month that business in Taupo, not all business, but some business is definitely under pressure and we need to bear that in mind and choose to spend local whenever we can and look forward to all the events that are coming because it does make a difference to them, but a lot of them are finding it pretty hard. I also wanted to mention that we had our first Kinloch representative group meeting and thank you for those of you who came, it went well, and Matt Andrews has been um, voted in as the deputy chair, so that's great. Looking forward to the future. Cool. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor Rankin. Uh, Councillor Shepherd, Sport and Rec. Mm, yeah, so I attended the first um, Sports Advisory Council meeting of the year uh, last week. Um, Kiwi Sport looks to be expanding what they provide in schools. They're in, introducing the intention of squash. Oh, so this year, sorry, 
I'm sorry. I'll repeat myself. Um, so yes, first sports advisory meeting of the year. Um, Sue from Kiwi Sport is expanding what she's providing in schools. Um, league and squash are on, on, on topic these days and we're looking at how I'm helping if I can to um, provide some facilitators there because they're a bit short on the ground. Um, and yeah, just uh, building on existing and new relationships within that committee space. Cool, thank you Councillor Shepherd. Councillor uh, Fletcher. Kia ora, uh, nothing to report on my part uh, since the uh, report given uh, earlier this month. So, kia ora, Thank you. Uh, Councillor John Williamson, Arts and Culture. Thank you, Wish. Is three quiet on the Arts and Culture portfolio front? Was due to the friends of the, of the Lake, Tell the Lake, Lake Tell Museum, Art Gallery last Tuesday before because the so I think Gabriel's been the third. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Williamson. Um, Councillor Lachlan, anything to report on environment and climate? Not a big deal, Your Worship. Um, um, Councillor Williamson's given me a heads up for a kids screening topo hui in April, which I'm planning to hopefully attend. Otherwise, just note that I um, really appreciate the work that he and um, Councillor Westman assisting me to get into this portfolio. Well, thank you, Councillor Lockham. Councillor Taylor, Deputy Mayor, anything on community safety? I just to reinforce the comments I've made in regard to the response uh, locally to uh, Cyclone Gabriel. Uh, a lot of the work is unseen by the general public. I just want to acknowledge the civil defence staff who work, and in particular park staff who've gone out of their way already up to their neck and work, who have had an extra load dumped on them. And I look forward to a debrief in due course where we can make sure that we as a community retain our resilience in terms of what assets we've got and how we would respond should we be in the eye of the storm next time. So, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Pack. In the strategic relationship space, uh, it it's been sort of haven't done much in the last three weeks because of Cyclone Gabriel and my um, my role as the joint Waikato Joint Committee uh, Chair hat on. Um, but did uh, along with yourself attend the uh, Total Business Awards launch last week? Um, also a Mankino Pōkani representative group, which I'm pleased to be on this training. And uh, I attended um, a joint. Committee meetings in the Thank you, Councillor Park. Councillor Cody, Leonard, anything from the primary industries? Yeah, thank you. Um, there was an outstanding response uh, here in Taipo straight after the cyclone and continuing on um, by farmers, for farmers, <clears throat> the helicopters, um, the generators, the foods, and other essentials that got in there was absolutely incredible. Um, Russell Bowman coordinated the first four chopper loads down into Pātoka, which was amazing. Um, due to the cyclone, we were forced to cancel our first um, East Rural Committee meeting, as the recommendation was at the time that we shouldn't be out on the roads. So that was on the Thursday. We did gather online the following Monday to debrief um, around what happened around the district. Um, that was good to have the team together and have a starting uh, conversation and would just like to wish the finalists in the Dairy Industry Awards, which is being held on Friday night, which was meant to be held in Taupo, but due to the damage caused by the cyclone has now had to be moved to Rotorua. So that's a real shame that that event won't be here with 300 people attending Friday. Um, and that's my roundup. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Just to support what you're saying, also the Deputy Mayor, just like to publicly acknowledge the transportation companies, the helicopter companies that absolutely rallied around. And uh, I know one particular um, a sponsor cost 28k paid out for one uh, trip or two trips down there. So, um, and just the businesses, and I think I see Jeanette there, but I believe my mural. Uh, relief fund is up to about 15k. Is that close. close to 15k, which is absolutely fantastic. So we'll just have to work out which way to channel that down to the the various people that 
that need it. So uh, thank you so much to all the individuals that have given donations as well uh, to our friends in an hour and a half east of here. So um, yeah, and I don't know if anyone's seen the, the washout on the naked Topal Road that happened last night. So uh, just, you know, it's going to take a long time to fix. And also just to publicly uh, acknowledge the sad passing of Mr. Neil Ladbrook, a uh, long time retailer, uh, a wonderful serviceman in the town, Lions Club, uh, all sorts of service organisations, and of course the owner of Mitre Tikwa, the family owned Mitre Teen up there. So just to acknowledge Neil, unfortunately passed away on Monday. Uh, so we think about him at this, at this time, and uh, I'll get the various, um, uh, you know, I'll go and see the family on behalf of ourselves. Uh, to leave the services at Friday, 2 o'clock. Very good. Well, thank you, members. Uh, I missed anyone out. Yeah. Councillor, oh, sorry, Sandra. I have indeed. Sorry. Thank Councillor you. Greenslade, thank do you. ring. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, I had a number of meetings during the month. Um, <clears throat> on the 17th of February, I met with Louise Upston and members of the community. I uh, couldn't tell. Uh, we were talking about the continuing concern about the lake levels down there. Uh, also was at the steering group meetings for Te Kapo and Park Playground, which is close to its final site. In fact, I think it has been signed off. And of course, the Turingi Sports Facility, which is looking absolutely amazing. And Turingi took a park in uh, Turingi. Um, I would like to just comment that the inaugural meeting of the Mana uh will take place tomorrow morning in Turingi at 9.30. Uh, and the next, the first meeting, the normal meeting of the Tongariro Award Committee will take place on Wednesday, the 15th of March. And finally, I would like to also comment on the community support in Turingi over Cyclone Gabriel. I think every Turingi road was closed at some point because of falling trees. Uh, the community pulled together, got stuck in, cleared the roads because, of course, we realised that, you know, there was damage everywhere and at times like that you do see what community is made of. I'd also like to acknowledge the Lions Company who took me up in their helicopter to view the damage a few days later and uh, many areas in our district will be on generator for weeks to come. The Lions Company have got power back on to everybody I think but there is extensive damage uh, particularly through the forest area and it was we followed the lines through and you could see very clearly where the damage was. So thanks to them for that. Um, that's all. Thank you, Wisha. Thank you very much. Councillor Greenslade. Uh, Councillor Campbell, sorry. Oh, you Wisha, thanks. Um, I'll just add through the sports and rec portfolio. I, I attended the um, Potiwaka Triathlon in the weekend. That was a exciting thing, actually. I hope for, hope for it to be repeated. Um, I don't know if there's any scheduled repeat, but I think that was a wonderful thing. Quite exciting. Good one, one town. One by a local too, the women's section, apparently. Uh, Nicole Vandekay. Very good. Thank you, Duncan. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Can I have a mover that means uh, accept the reports, please? Thank you, Councillor Moffat. Seconded by Councillor Brankton. All those in favour, please say aye. All those against, carry. Right, 5.2, Lake Topal Protection Trust recommendations to transfer management function to Topal District Council. And I believe we have Mr uh, Clayton Stent here uh, to uh, come and say a few words as well. Do you want to come up, Clayton? Uh, uh, it's an honour and a privilege to welcome the former Nia, uh, Clayton. Thank you, Wisha. Nice to see you. Thank you. Back in the chamber. Oh, I was in the chamber when you were around, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. And Philip, we've got... Philip? Yes. Thank good you. afternoon, Philip. Good afternoon, Your Worship, and good afternoon, councillors. Um, so in this paper, we are seeking a decision to transfer the management functions to Lake Tapo Protection Trust to the District Council. Um, this recommendation was based on an assessment done by KPMG, which is found in the appendix of the paper. And they concluded that it would be cheaper if these um, uh, management functions are 
proposed by the District Council. And also it ensures that our good relations with the landowners and which were fostered over two decades by the trust are maintained by us. Um, so as I said, the uh, Lake Taupo Protection Project has been ongoing for two decades for the best part of it. And so I've asked um, Mr. Kate and Stan to join us to give a quick background on what the Lake Taupo Protection Trust is and why was this project set up in the first place and what it has achieved over the past two decades. Um, but one, one last thing from my end is just to point out that any decision that you take today will not prevent you from taking uh, future decisions on what to do with the trust. We are looking at some options um, around what to do with the trust next, and we are aiming to get back to you around April, possibly in March even. And so we'll hand over to Clayton now, and then we can take any questions. Thanks, Philip. Thank you. Any questions before we end up to Clayton? Uh, cool. Clayton. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, councillors, um, thank you for the invitation to be here. Uh, Philip's told me I've got about five to ten minutes, so uh, he's at liberty to just uh, elbow me in the ribs because I can get a bit carried away on this topic and I'll rattle on and the time will go. Um, but uh, he's asked me just to uh, cover off a little bit of the history of the project for those that may not be uh, familiar with it, uh, which I'll do and, and perhaps just um, summarise where we're up to now and some of the decisions and, and challenges that might be um, uh, at the front of, of where we're going forward. I'm going to start by um, presenting to Council another copy of this book. I'm sure you've got it in your records. This is the uh, the summary that was compiled in 2015 when the nitrogen target was um, completed. Um, and it's a very useful summary of, of the whole project. Uh, it has timelines in it, it's got comments from very key uh, stakeholders and, and um, participants in the project. So I'll leave that with Council and um, if councillors would like to just reference it um, after this meeting or whenever, it might be a, a um, valuable little reference point. So, Thank you. Um, so look, let's just in summary, what's this project been all about? So in the late 1990s, um, uh, uh, Locals, I think, were noticing that there was a bit of a degradation going on in the quality of the water in the lake. We fear to say the lake for a long time, well before me, was recognised for the clarity of its water, its cleanliness. Um, it's, it's just a pristine uh, body of water. Um, it's significant nationally, internationally uh, and locally to iwi um, and to anybody who lives here. That, those initial signs, I think, um, morphed into some initial science work um, undertaken by a local scientist and um, presented itself into the records of what is now the Waikato Regional Council, Environment Waikato, I think it was back then, uh, and uh, the local council. So if we move forward into the 2000s, it, um, there was a point where it was determined that what was happening out there was real and we needed to have a better understanding of what was going on and then uh, obviously depending on what that information was where it, where it would go forward so the regional council commissioned some pretty in detailed scientific work with their um, scientists and over a period of two or three years their reports were compiled and in summary came back and said yes we've got a problem the lake is declining in its water quality um, and we think the biggest contributor is nitrogen. Um, as we all appreciate, um, the lake is a crater lake. Um, we're sitting on top of a volcano. Uh, there are a lot of underground aquifers, um, but the geology of the area is very porous. Um, there's a lot of pumice, rocks, etc. So we're not like unfortunate, our unfortunate neighbours on the coast where drainage is a bit of an issue. It's one of the um, problems that, to a degree we don't suffer to the same extent. However, uh, being free draining, anything that's going in at the top is ending up in aquifers at the bottom. And consequently, uh, it was uh, identified that the nitrogen and, and the, the finger was pointed uh, at the farming community uh, and to a degree justified. 
Um, but the nitrogen that was being applied in the soils was finding its way down through those soils into the underground aquifers, feeding out into the lake and um, helping grow algae, um, weeds uh, and any other means of vegetation that may be starting to compromise the clarity of the water. That's a very brief summary, non-scientific. As a consequence of that, um, the, the Taupo District Council uh, and the uh, Regional Council started talking in depth about well, how do we actually uh, respond to this issue. The science uh, indicated that um, one of the remediations was to reduce the amount of nitrogen that was going into the lake and a figure of 20 per cent uh, was ultimately seized upon and that was after there was an assessment of uh, the activities within the catchment, uh, how much roughly nitrogen was going on, it wasn't a precise figure at that time, uh, and a scientific estimate of what might need to be taken out. So um, that was in the early 2000s. Um, that accord uh, developed um, 2002, 2003, uh, and resulted in a, a plan being agreed between the, the councils that uh, there needed to be some policy changes uh, to the, the regional plan um, to address this nitrification uh, removal. That resulted in a variation of the regional plan, variation five it was called, uh, went through the environment court, but what it did uh, was uh, incredibly innovative, incredibly contentious, uh, and um, uh, was uh, probably the first of its case in the world, and I think probably still is today whereby you needed a resource consent to operate as a farmer uh, or a business that had a nitrogen uh, uh, component to it uh, within the catchment. Now, the catchment is best described as the rim of the volcano. It's not the whole district, but if you have a look eerily around the lake, you can see um, the rim of the, of the volcano. So anything inside the volcano was going to be caught by this variation. That was pretty contentious, uh, and it would be fair to say that at a multitude of levels, uh, the, some as, or some areas of the public responded quite negatively um, to that. Um, but over a period of time, um, those matters were quelled, and um, everybody marched forward. So, having arrived at that that policy position, it was then the question: Well, how are we actually going to do this? What's it going to cost? Where's the money going to come from? Um, and who's going to do the work. Um, again, we were very fortunate in about 2004, um, uh, meeting down at Manuel's uh, between the, the then Mayor and the Regional Council Chair uh, with Marion Hobbs, and for the first time in New Zealand's history, uh, the government was prepared to front with some money for an environmental project. Now, you'll understand the consequence of that um, because governments don't like funding environmental projects. Um, it's an open checkbook and it's, an empty, it's a, a, a pretty vast um, uh, resource for people uh, if uh, you get on that bandwagon. There's a lot of environmental projects in this country. So that was um, quite a milestone um, and that provided a funding pool initially of uh, I think it was about 70 odd million required to remove. That was the estimate uh, of the cost to remove the, um, the then nitrogen uh, amount. Uh, it was apportioned. The government were going to put in 35 percent of it with the balance being shared between TDC and um, the regional council. That was funded by way of special rates, which you might recall, which were around for about a decade from 2008 through 2018. Um, the next question was then, how are we actually going to manage this? Now, it, historically, um, projects are managed by committees of council. Problems with problem with committees of council is that they tend to change every three years. And when you're looking at a project that was to endure for an unknown period, um, uh, it was um, a little bit of a challenge to address the, the problem that, that, that was um, indicating. And I'll put my hand up and say that um, I was a big proponent of getting it out of committees of council. Uh, and through all of those discussions and whatnot, we ended up at a position whereby a, um, an independent trust, still a committee of council, uh, was to be formed, which uh, would have trustees who could operate commercially, 
uh, semi-independently in that they were able to make their own commercial decisions and manage the monies that were made available to them, um, but still accounting back through uh, what is known now as the Joint Committee, which is a representation of the key stakeholders. So Kapa District Council, Regional Council, Central Government and Tuwhore Tower, the key stakeholders in the district and obviously for this project. So that trust was formed in 2008. The initial trustees were uh, appointed and they were given a pot of money and said, go forth and conquer. No tools, no guidance, just go out and do it. You've got until you've got, um, 2018, 10 years of funding to get rid of 20% of the nitrogen that's currently flowing into the lake. Um, it would be fair to say that there are some people that need to be um, mentioned and um, respected in the work that they did. Um, one being John Kneebone, who was the initial chair of the um, of the trust. His background was a little bit, um, well, very rural. Um, he was in Federated Farmers. He was involved quite heavily uh, with the Rural Bank in the 1980s when uh, there were all sorts of financial issues confronting farming. So very connected, very informed and um, associated with the, the farming considerations that needed to go into the project. A uh, couple of key staff members, Graham Fleming and Marion Peck, Marion's still with us, um, who brought some very strategic thinking to um, the project um, and helped uh, coddle together with the trustees uh, an approach. So the initial approach was for the trust to utilise funds to acquire farms, uh, convert them to forestry, and then resell them back um, and take the nitrogen take away from the farm. Uh, it would be fair to say, I think there were three farms that um, that uh, process was utilised with, but it wasn't working that well. Uh, we were in that period, 2008, so the GFC, um, 10, 11, prices were bouncing all over the place. Um, uh, there were quite significant risks in what was being paid for the land versus what you could recover back and, and, and offset. So that model didn't continue for too long. Uh, the preferred model was to actually uh, work with the landowners about change of farming practices and part and parcel of that was uh, acquisition of the nitrogen that they had. So just wheeling back a little bit, when the uh, policy change came in, all farmers had a grandfathered um, uh, allocation of nitrogen. That was a, a grandfathering of based on the highest application of the three years prior to the implementation of the policy. So that set the nitrogen that they were able to utilise in their farming practices. Now, uh, the average of the three years prior, if you'd been a really good farmer, were actually pretty generous um, because they'd had some thumping good seasons. There'd been a lot of nitrogen applied and more so than um, was actually needed for a good farming operation. So there were farms out there that had an excess and they were prepared to um, moderate their farming activities and make that excess nitrogen available for compensation. Um, to the trust. The trust also did um, deals with some farmers to convert from their farming activities to forestry uh, and it also uh, initiated um, some carbon agreements between power companies and farmers uh, whereby they, they um, sequestered some carbon um, income from their, their conversion. So um, a nice little economic um, pool and uh, worked very well. Um, Interesting fact, um, one that you'll probably know, uh, that Tuwhare Tower, um, are the largest uh, landowner in the district, on the catch catchment, 66% uh, of the land, I think it is, Dan, is that right? It's a large number, uh, is owned by um, Iwi. Now, the difficulty with that is unlike a, um, a freehold landowner who can sell their land or do whatever, um, too far to can't sell their land, they are land bound. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, there was a separate negotiation that needed to occur with them um, because any change to their farming practices is going to be long, long, long term and not something they could walk, walk away from, walk away from. Um, I have to acknowledge again publicly as we've done on many occasions 
the role that Tuwhai Tau have played in this entire project, and the way that they have committed their lands to it. Um, uh, and to date, I think uh, that is working well. Um, but it's a long time that they have committed um, their lands to the project. Anybody that contracted with the uh, Protection Trust has done so on a 999-year basis. So it's not just a brief undertaking. Running forward, um, those contracts worked their way through. About 2011, I think it was, uh, the scientists came back and said, um, we've just reworked our figures, we're a little bit short. We need to take another 20 tonne of nitrogen out. Um, now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it is quite significant when you've got a finite amount of nitrogen available uh, in the catchment and needing to ensure that those who were still operating could do it on a sustainable basis. So there was very much a, a, um, a finite amount that was available at any time for purchase or, or transfer. Um, the government, or in fact all the parties, came together and provided some additional resource um, so that we could fund the acquisition of that additional nitrogen. And in 2015, um, the trust was able to report that it had contracted uh, all the nitrogen it needed to achieve its target. And those contracts uh, were fully paid out in 2018. So that's that's a very snapshot history, and I've rambled through it, and I'm happy to take any questions if you want any more detail. Thanks. So in 2018, which is where we are now in effect. So we had finished our contracting. The trust uh, owned uh, 170 tonnes of nitrogen with a book value 80-odd million, probably on today's prices, over 100. Um, it had created a nitrogen trading uh, regime within the catchment, so farmers, independent parties can buy and sell between themselves. They're not the trust wasn't the only entity that um, was a purchaser of nitrogen. Uh, it has 27 contracts with various farmers uh, for 999 years to operate um, at certain cap levels. That cannot change. Um, and it has, um, through some very prudent investing, I may say, um, managed to um, have a, a fighting fund left at the end of the project. And the question's been asked, where do we go from here? What happens? Um, the trust was, or well, the project was supposed to come to an end in 2018. Um, there wasn't an answer as to what was going to happen in 2018. Uh, neither was announced in 2019 after the first year extension, and I think we're starting to get to the cusp of, cusp of it now in 2023. But the reality is that the trust has a finite life. Uh, the project was project specific, uh, and that project has been concluded. Uh, the issues are what do we do with these remaining assets? who's actually going to take the role of um, ownership in terms of the contracts, uh, honouring them and ensuring that they continue on. Uh, initially, there was discussion about regional council uh, undertaking that role. Um, the trust, uh, whilst we try and stay politically neutral, did have a view that that was inappropriate because the regional council uh, is a regulator in this project. It has its own obligations in terms of the project. Uh, and what we have are private contracts, and we have experienced uh, over the years the conflict that arises out of that, where a particular entity may not be in breach of its regulatory obligations, but it's in breach of its contractual obligations. Um, another story. Uh, that discussion has uh, ensued to a point where the Joint Committee, just prior to Christmas, has recommended as a result of that KPMG report uh, that uh, the, uh, the management of those assets um, in the main uh, come back into the, the Taupo District Council. Uh, and that's really uh, where we're at today. If I can just close off by saying um, the, the um, statement that has always attached to this project uh, has been to why to iwi the water the people. It's never rung more true than today. And I think 
as we look around at the tragedies um, affecting our neighbours, the importance of water <laughs> is, is really becoming a, a big reality. That is the source of not only our drinking water and the water that we utilise for uh, our daily lives, um, it's a fundamental to the economy of this district. Uh, it's an important body of water locally, internationally, whatever level you want to put on it. We have, as a trust, for years and continue to do so, hosted uh, international visitors asking about this project because of its uniqueness. Uh, we have a, an American university that's come out every second year as part of their PhD, part of their PhD program with their students to look into it. Um, we have um, countless approaches from uh, landowners asking what they can and cannot do uh, and with these uh, with the limitations that the project has. Um, we have educated lawyers, we've educated real estate agents, we've educated accountants, we've educated a whole lot of parties who need to understand what the nitrogen trading regime is all about uh, and the, um, the consents that are required when buying and selling land within this catchment. Um, where to going forward? Um, I, I suppose from the trust perspective, we are concerned about the vulnerability of the project. It's been hugely successful to date. It would be horrible to find it in a bottom drawer forgotten about in a few years' time um, with the public's $80 million cast aside and some old habits starting to return and starting to compromise the lake. It needs a voice. Uh, now, the Protection Trust isn't just about management. Uh, it is uh, the conduit of conversations between landowners, councils, regulators, government. Uh, it is its own policeman in terms of the project. Uh, and it's also the watchdog of the likes of the regional council to make sure that their monitoring is undertaken and the reports that are required annually are presented. Uh, so there is a role there. Um, we understand the, the KPMG report indicating the cost savings in not having the trust. Um, I've got to say this is not just about money. Um, there's actually a wider task than just the money. Um, the focus of that report, in my opinion, uh, is, is based on an administrative cost. Um, the administrator's got a bigger role than just um, looking at books and balancing. Uh, accounts. I won't say any more because they're close to 10. <laughs> don't, don't tell. <laughs> okay. Okay. Apologies. Um, but happy to take any questions you wish. Yeah. No problems at all. Thank you. And thank you for that um, <clears throat> dossier of uh, uh, but it's good to, good to refresh all our minds and as to what you've achieved and the trust has achieved. It's been amazing. You had the, the whole thing was set out to Reduce the nitrogen going to the lake by 20%, yeah. and you achieved that in 2015. So that's uh, that's wonderful. And, and you know, I can remember when you, we instigated at the time, you know, we were having a little old people wanting to contribute. They just love that lake total protection right. Yeah. No one loves rates, but they love that. They were mm. more than happy to pay that on their rates demands, and it was just uh, fantastic. And it's a real credit to you. In the organisation. So. Any questions of Peyton? Yep. Councillor Williamson? I don't actually have a question. I'm just, um, just the quality of that presentation just gives an idea of the quality of the leadership and the trust. For many years I've been on the uh, Joint Committee for about four terms, and just council has been an advocate to the preservation and protection of that trust going forward for the reasons that Peyton has explained. Uh, we'll protect our lake out there, just pay them and those contracts. The legacy of the book and the protection of those those um, landowners through that through the trust being independent. So congratulations, Pete and your team. Councillor Lachlan. Um just note my interest in terms of being a trustee on the Two Fatal Maori Trust Board. It doesn't affect this conversation, but yeah. Um just a couple of things, just note that I think the original goal was to be able to for our, our kids in the future to enjoy the lake quality of the water and 2000, yeah, I think that was a key one. So we 
So the lake will get to deteriorate over time, but due to these actions, um, we should be enjoying uh, the water quality that, that we enjoyed back then. So, um, but yes, just um, my personal view is I'm pleased that this keeps it local um, and to support uh, Clayton's earlier comments in terms of um, the relationship with regional council and how these things can be subsumed. Um, so just note my um, support for that reason. But yes, it was a lot of work at the time. Um, but yeah, it was, um, I think, a world leading outcome. So. Thank you, Councillor. Any, any other questions or queries? Just like to add one point. Um, concur completely with all the comments made, and I think unfortunately we've just seen the example of when things are taken away too far from local communities and local decision makings, the outcomes that can occur. And I guess I just implore everybody to look at this and the opportunity to keep this local being looked after locally and ensuring the best outcomes for our Tonga that we can see out there. And it's great that it's not going to the bottom drawer. But, uh, you know, just think of reflecting on the uh, economic opportunities that are coming out of this too, you know, where the uh, Ban Ki-moon, the what was it? United Nations General. Secretary General, uh, sitting on the, on the platform out here, and we were discussing it with him. The Speaker of Myanmar had many political leaders mm -hmm. and uh, visitations from around the world and uh, you know so not only the benefits to the lake but benefits to our community too so. very good there's a couple of uh, recommendations here without any further ado we'll i'll ask for a mover uh council mm -hmm. williamson mm -hmm. you're happy to move then one two and three oh do i have a second please mm -hmm. thank you deputy mayor uh, so uh, we'll just uh, move those recommendations, one, two or three, and thank you Clayton, for your time today. Yeah. But I believe you're in semi-retirement these days. Yeah. Please define that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder no, you look so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much, Philip, for all your hard work on this. So uh, move those one and two or three, Councillor Williamson, Councillor Taylor. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It's against. Carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Right, item number 5.3, Mangakino, new name, road name, two, good afternoon ladies. Good afternoon, yeah. uh, councillors and your worship. Uh, so, um, Kim Smiley hasn't been before you, so she's part of the resource consent team, this is her item, and I just want to introduce her to you. Yes, yes, it is. Welcome, Kim. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, so today, my item is just for, for um, naming a public new public road in Mangakino. Um, so yeah, I presume everybody's read the document. We've checked it against the road naming standards. We've consulted with emergency services. And also, um, you'll see there, Warwick Moana Incorporated and um, Rokawa. So, I'm just wondering if anybody has any questions about the proposed the truth. Did you come up with the original name? <laughs> <laughs> While I don't have a problem with the name, I was just wondering, is this the sort of thing, should it come to the Mangi Kino Pawakani Rep Group for being a recommendation that to Council? Like I'm just thinking this is kind of something that I would think that the the rep group should have had come to them first. So that was just one thing. Like I don't know if we're gonna get any more <laughs> road names coming up um, in the future, but if we are, I would like to see it come to the rep group first. The delegation does sit with um with that committee, but I'd say it was a timing issue with the establishment of those committees given the um the new triennium. Well we just had our meeting last week, but yeah. yeah. Right, but it's in terms of the agenda timeframes and the like to get a, get a, get a point on that agenda. Mm -hmm. So the answer is normally a whip? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's will be a surprise. More, it will be a surprise. Um, okay. yeah. um, and, and just the other thing that I was 
just a bit concerned of it is that we have said um, we've done consultation with Rokoa and that was we contacted them twice and they didn't reply. So to me, is that real consultation? Have we had a conversation with someone or have we just sent some emails? Like yeah, so I'll, I'll respond to that. Um, that's fair a question. So um, this item was ready to come to council in October of last year to try and get the road named for the um, the developer prior to um, going into elections. Uh, the item had been prepared and I um, picked it up and said, oh, hang on a moment, I think we need to just put this to Rokawa. Um, so we've been trying to build a relationship with them over the last one to two years in particular around um, letting them know about consents, letting them know about things that are um, of interest in the area. The response and the discussions I've had with them has been around, um, we really appreciate that. There will be some things that we will miss in terms of their workloads um, and acknowledge that and there's some things that um, they will pick up and they will come in and have a conversation with, with us. So um, whilst yes, there has been some radio silence, um, they were aware of the proposal and um, this as a development from as early as, as back in March, we had conversations around it. In terms of though going to them um, and and putting it on their radar, it was uh, it has been um, an email and a follow-up email to say, hey, um, this is something that we're putting to council agenda to name the road. Can you come back to us if you've got any any comments or feedback? So, um, yeah, and um, I believe David Armacup is going to pick up on um, that this week. I haven't heard from David how that conversation went or if anything happened there, but um, yeah, that's kind of. Working on a, a relationship um, and understanding the, the pressures and workloads, but mm. it's been um, I remember, yeah, so about four four months or so since we approached them. And just through your worship, just to acknowledge that question, um, just on behalf of David, he has again um, reached out to them just to make sure that they were aware that this paper was coming through to council today. They've had a change in that area, but they are more than aware that the paper. Okay, and, yeah, and I suppose just the other concern that I've got just locally, like, um, so with Wairapa Moana Incorporation, was it, um, my, my concern is, was it sort of decided down in Wairapa or was it the local people that, that live locally that, that have responded? Like, has there been any local input into this? This is what, that's kind of the question that I've got. Yeah, I just think, like, naming a road is a pretty, um, you know, long-term thing, and I just feel like we haven't consulted properly. That's how I feel. Yeah. Was it just an email down to um, what it up? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I have got a letter here from Warrafa Moana, um, which you're welcome to, to take a look at. Um, yeah, I mean, the... Um, I can read it out if you like. Um, however, it's um, it's from Anaru Smiler, Group General Manager. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Neutral or what's that? Sorry. Well, what's their position? Um, they they um, they consider the road lends itself to being a being a place as it is no exit road. We agree to either of those names being used. So two names were put forward. One yeah. was Lakeview Place. Or lakeside place, and they confirmed that they would be happy with either name. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, just in terms of process, perhaps, um, in terms of road naming, um, which seems to be a common thing that's coming your way lately, uh, the, it falls back on the developer to take the consultation. Um, they take that generally on our lead as to who they should be um, contacting, then. Um, and they put forth the names and it goes through emergency services. So they, they put together that work and then they bring it to us to bring as an item, um, essentially. So we're kind of an auditor in some ways, checking off um, that they've, they've, they've followed all the processes that are required and then putting it as a new name um, for yourselves. Cool. Okay, any other questions for ladies? Okay, we have a suggested uh, resolution there. Recommendation, do I have a move, please? Councillor Trenton, seconded. Thank you, Councillor. 
Franken. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against, it's carried. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Right, 5.5 Local District Council performance report. Uh, 5.4, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Cedar. Thank you, Your Worship, and, um, and yes, this is my last um, report as CE, so um, I've just taken the opportunity in the, in the report there just to acknowledge um, obviously yourselves as, as Mayor and Councillors and the, um, the faith that you've given on me over the, the time that I've been in the seat, um, but also to our team, our staff and our community in terms of the, the good work that they've done um, with me over that time. So um, so that's sort of the, the bulk of the report, if you like, um, the opening report. Um, it's really been for me, it's been a, a, um, a highlight of my working life um, to be leading this council and, and this organisation. Um, and so you're very much appreciative of the, the opportunities that I've had um, over that time. Um, there's a, a number of um, projects that we've referred to in the in the report, and we'll go through them, and the team will go through them in the financials, um, word for word, page by page. Very good. Thank you very much. Good to see you. All right, Jeanette Pennell. Good afternoon. Thank you. I had the document all open and then it disappeared on me. So, <laughs> <laughs> document management systems. Do you want me to keep talking? No, no, it's going to come up really quickly. <laughs> um, so I'm just addressing the uh, finance part of the report. Financial part. So I uh, will take the um, report as read for the financial section. Um, just wanted to point out a couple of items on there in terms of information that we're going to bring back to you. Um, but just, I would draw your attention to the other expenses line. So you'll see that we are um, 34k favourable there, which means we're pretty close to the wire with our expenses. So um, those are being managed at a call centre level. Um, overall, though, we're ahead of our surpluses ahead of plan, but that's mainly due to capital expenditure type revenues, so development contributions and um, grants and subsidies for our town centre type one project. Um, and our other expenses, our personnel costs are over budget. So um, some of that is to do with, we've got um, salaries in there that we're using, that we're um, spending on the three waters transition, but that's been funded by a grant. Um, but of course we separate the income and the expenditure. We've got timing variances and we've got other increases. So we will provide a breakdown to you a more detailed breakdown to you about that at the next meeting. And also our finance costs are starting to get over budget. So we'll have another look at that and forecast our year end position and we'll bring an, an item to you for a budget change resolution on those finance expenses. Um, the next page is on the capital investment. So you can just see there that we're we are tracking behind, but we sort of knew that we would. Um, we are ahead of where we were last year by $4 million, so that's really good. Um, and we still have um, projects to complete this year. We'll spend quite a bit of money on, so hopefully that position will come up similar to last year or better. And then the next page has just got some items that are oh, the Treasury compliance, which is all okay. And then um, just talking to the items that um, the CEO has approved in the last since our last report um, with capital um, budget approved capital budget expenditure um, over five hundred thousand. There was uh, three contracts signed in that area, and nothing on the um, budgeted expenditure. Have to take any questions? Tēnā koutou katoa, elected members, Your Worship the Mayor, Executive. Um, this is our first significant projects update since November of last year, so I hope you're all comfortable with the traffic light update. We've got 19 uh, projects, and you'll note that there's several new projects that we're now reporting on across the portfolio, such as the Tohara Ridge Reservoir, which is a large-scale water project, View Road Land Disposal Site Expansion, and SCADA, which is Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It covers off remote data gathering devices from our water and wastewater sites. I was wondering what 
I will add that we're in the process of gathering requirements for reporting improvements for this report, and you will see some look and feel improvements um, as we lead into the 23-24 financial year. So just running through the program, I would add that excitingly, TTCT, ETA and the airport um, uh, have their large scale uh, gatherings next week. So I thank you very much all for your support um, as we lead into March the 9th and the 11th. Um, obviously, we are pretty much complete with Turangi Wastewater Treatment Plant uh, and they're all being closed out. There's been some pleasing progress across Wyora House, View Road, uh, the Three Waters Reform Program, of course, Turangi Street Revitalisation and Southern Trunk Main. Um, and just echoing Councillor Greenslade's comments earlier, Turangi Takua, Community Sports Facility and Te Kapua are both looking great, going very well. So a big shout out to all of those involved in these projects across the project team, project managers and the governance groups along with our suppliers as we continue to deliver. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions on Penel? No? All very straightforward. Oh, yeah, um, Your Worship, I'd just like to thank Garrett um, on record. Um, since this is your last CE report, um, I've had the pleasure of working with Gareth as a fellow staff member back in 2008 and then um, have sat around this table since then, uh, since 2010. Um, yeah, thank you. I've really appreciated your openness and I also get to work with you on another forum being the Waikato Civil Defence Emergency Management Joint Committee, myself as chair and you as the chair of the KED group. So, yeah, thank you so much for all your effort and your openness to trying new things and wish you all the best in your planet. Very good. <coughs> Councillor Leonard. Thank you for your report. I just note there that in this, we've got the Taupo Airport upgrade is on budget as a green line and it came to us that we needed to add more money to that project. So how does it get to be considered on budget and it's not? Um, so we've got a green light there, yet we're being asked for X amount more. I'm happy to take this question, Councillor Leonard. So uh, thanks to you, very good question. So the way the performance report is set up is it's reporting on the delivery of our capital projects. So before we received the additional funding from council, we were reporting South Wales project as red because it didn't have sufficient budget to complete the activities required to deliver that project. Following council's approval to inject equity into the joint venture and therefore fund the project with an increased budget, there's now sufficient budget in the project to deliver the outcomes and therefore it's changed from red to green. So those are the, okay. that's the principle with which we are applying the framework. Um, absolutely fair question um, and happy to, happy to, if you wish, take that as a comment to refine our reporting mechanisms so that these things are identified. Thank you for clarifying Thank you. that. Councillor Greenside. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the Turingi Street uh, Revitalisation uh, Program, I know, has hit um, a few bumps. Um, and in fact, they're not of our making. We, we're aware of that, and you've noted that in your report. Um, I would just sort of like to do a bit of crystal ball, ball gazing here and think that it's possibly highly unlikely that MB will be coming with more money for us, considering the current circumstances in the country. Is that and if you comment? It's a very good question, Council Queenslade. And I think the discussion we had with our MB representative who um, speaks on behalf of Kanoa prior to Cyclone Gabrielle was that taking a case regarding the fact that we have co-funded to date a total of 2.2 with a possible future to get to the end of stage five of further 2.2 would mean that the Minister looks quite favourably upon the reallocation of funding. I haven't spoken to that person subsequent to that, uh, subsequent to uh, Valentine's Day, which is the day we all remember. Um, but I do believe we're going to be 
stepping him through uh, the several MB representatives who are visiting Turangi next Wednesday prior to the opening. Um, so I will provide an update after that. Thank you, Peniel. And uh, really, um, the cost overruns uh, probably as a result of the issues with the concrete, concreting. So they're unforeseen and really not in our making, are they? Nothing to do with council. Thank you. I'm very good, thank you. Uh, so this uh, item is a mechanical one uh, that comes to you about this time every year. Uh, it's simply to receive the statements of intent from council controlled organisations uh, before the legislative deadline of 1 March. So that was been tomorrow, had to happen today. Uh, first step in the process, you're simply receiving them uh, and then, you, as you'll see in the recommendations, direct officers to go away and review these and then also receive any comments from yourselves and then bring them back to have those comments ratified at a meeting in April. Uh, and then finally, once those comments go back to uh, those council controlled organisations, you'll then finally adopt them in June. So that's all I have to Thank you. Thank you. Pretty straightforward. Just the Bot place one just being that we've just acknowledged mm. Gareth's leaving and then we've got mm. him as a member named in that document. Is that appropriate? I imagine that they will amend that prior to the adoption of the final document. But so, yes. yes, they have resigned from Bot place, um, but they haven't been able to, they haven't yet appointed a new member because that goes with the position. Um, so it'll be Geordie as an act then in an acting capacity in that meantime. Um, yeah, probably should be amended in the statement of the tenth. Yeah, that was, I mean, this is obviously only a draft, so yeah. um, adopted the final version in, in June. So in that interim period, I suppose it will have acting CEO until such time as that either it's still an acting CEO of June or the new CEO is appointed. Uh, but that's so, yeah. so it comes yeah. back to us in June. What's that, sorry? Will it come back to us? Again? So we'll come back to you again in April to yeah. ratify any comments that you've got, and then it'll come back in June for final uh, endorsement okay. uh, once it's adopted. So the, we'll amend it in June? Yeah. We can amend it between now and then, uh, once Gareth's gone. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
because it, it, you won't, uh, so it will come back to you in April to endorse any comments that you've made, by which time Gareth has departed the role and Julie's acting CEO. So we know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have moved yet. Councillor Park, Senator by Councillor Shepherd. All those in favour, please say aye. Thanks, aye. 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 Gary, right. Gary, moving on, we have 5.6 to here for Tay, Hirangi, Total Regional Destination Management Plan. Oh, okay. Sorry, Councillors. Um, lovely to be here today. And I do want to acknowledge Jane um, because DGLT has a lot of the work in making sure that we're able to present the destination management plan here today. Um, it, is, it is a big milestone. Uh, this is a project that has been worked on for just over two years. So it's a big day to be able to present this to you to seek your endorsement of the plan. Um, in terms of acknowledging DGLT in terms of and making us meet the timeframes. I also want to uh, really highlight the work of what was called the Leadership Advisory Group that provided strategic direction to the formation of the plan. And that's a group that was formed uh, from iwi and from organisations that had probably primary responsibility for looking after this destination. Uh, in terms of the work um, that's gone into this, yeah, the other part I really wanted to highlight was that uh, it has been a community-based plan. So. There's, I think, 1,500 conversations with communities. You are well aware as councillors the amount of workshops that you've been involved in to identify issues, to look at strategic direction, to identify opportunities, even right down to the actions we workshopped um, with the community as well. So, so it's very much um, based on the information that's come back through those sources. The issues that you've seen in the destination management plan, I think most of those will be very familiar to you, and I also want to highlight a number of those are already being worked on by council. So, for example, housing's in there. You're well aware that that's a key piece of, of work that's underway within the organisation. Um, so, today is, is a bit of a milestone to seek your endorsement. We're happy to answer any questions. I feel very supported by Jane being here and also just acknowledge that Rowan was in the room and he's um, been leading that piece of work. Yes. Unfortunately, he had to go to another hui. So, we're happy to answer any questions. Cool. Thank you very much. Any questions? So, well, your comment, um, and, and I just reinforce uh, Julie's comments around the issues, and I'm reading through those. That this uh, just touch on it digs deeply into a number of other um, work streams within council, and it would be great to see this document played out with some of the other work streams because there it's a hand in glove: housing, infrastructure, accommodation. Those three, just off the top of my head which are massive big ticket items, if we don't get that right, then this is not going to fly. So thank you for, the, for that work. Any other questions or comments? No? Very good. Well, thank you, ladies. Very okay. straight. Oh, thanks. Pretty good. Well, again, I thank you to everyone. I mean, it really was a community up. effort. So yeah. um, yeah. endorse the report, please. Have a move. Thank you, Councillor Parks, and by Councillor Rankin. All those in favour, please say aye. It's aye. against. Karen. Thank you very much. Item number 5.7. Approval submission on the natural and built environment goal and the spatial planning planning goal. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, Councillor and your worship. Um, today we are seeking your approval for our submission of the Natural and Built Environment Act and the Special Planning Act. Um, so we circulated this to you through email and it has now been lodged. Um, so this is the retrospective approval. Um, we are also seeking um, an, elect an elected member or members to present at this select committee. Um, we take the report as read and happy to take any questions. Thank you. Lisa, Ripper. Yes, I'm Oh, nice to meet you, Lisa. Is it your first time caller? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, <laughs> welcome. Nice to have you here. How long have you been with the council? Uh, it's now been three months. Hello? Three months. Three months. Oh, good. And looking after you all right? Yes. <laughs> good. Good. Oh, very good. Nice to see you, Hilary. 
Okay, uh, questions or queries? Councillor Park. Um, it's through you, Your Worship. Um, it's more of commentary, really, and it, it, off the back of some comments the Deputy Mayor made earlier today around, I've got written down here things like Health New Zealand and the cyclone response and whatnot, and it's, it's all about that taking away from local and, uh, and I'm going to just say this once for 5.7 and in the next agenda item, it's taking away from local and centralising things and it not being done timely or appropriately. And I think Health New Zealand is a perfect example of what not to do. We've got an opportunity through the select committee to kind of boil down our key messages and some really good examples recently that we can use um, to reinforce that point through that process. Thank you. Um, I have just got a little bit of an update here from um, the select committee. How about this for a time frame? Um, we've, we can speak um, to the select committee on Thursday. Yes, this Thursday, Friday or Monday. So um, because our submission was entered late and they obviously just bowled ahead with the select committee process um, regardless of the extensions, which I think have been extended to a lot of um, the councils, um, we've bumped right into the uh, select committee process. So just giving you a heads up that it's a very quick turnaround. We will no doubt do have to do that via Zoom rather than in person, obviously. Councillor Lockman. Uh, so with that other submission we talked about, either yourself or Councillor Taylor um, speaking to them, is that still, we're looking at the same thing here or? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Taylor, I know he's over this one, and he's volunteered his services. <laughs> Is it you just wanting one or two? We're in your hands with that. Then, oh, yeah. Just like the three waters, I'm happy to help Councillor Taylor. Through you, I wonder whether it would be appropriate as the mayor, it yeah. means that level of support and why it would be appropriate for you to be there yeah. as well. Uh, as I'm speaking to the three waters one that's scheduled for Monday as well. Um, if you want me to to present on this one, I'm not available Thursday or Friday, so it would have to be Monday. Uh, I guess there's a timing issue around that because we have that select committee and our times for that are between nine and one. No narrower than that. So yeah. and I imagine uh, there's some yeah. logistical issues yeah. if they conflict. Yeah. I imagine they'll be similar for this too. They'll just give us a. Uh, um, but I am happy to go back because they have said, please let me know if you can make any of these dates. So we have got the opportunity to go back and say, well, are there any other options? Um, just through the chair, another thing is uh, on a call with the Minister of Emergency Management, who's also local government recently, I asked him about um, assurance around affected districts by the cyclone and them ha having their fair say through the submission process, will be able to submit in the first place, mm -hmm. let alone being taken part in the submission process. And he said that nothing would happen without everyone getting their fair call. So are they, is this extended deadlines for them like there is with the census? I haven't seen anything about that. Um, I, what, all I've seen is the dates um, that, were, that are on the website um, and they've added Monday the sixth to that, but I, I think you're right. They'll have to do some sort of extension for other councillors, councils as well. So Deputy, you're just available on Monday. Are uh, you correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, so is that right? Are we down back to them? The only caveat is that the timing is synchronised with the other select <laughs> committee, <laughs> whether they talk to each other in the the bowels of Parliament, the committee secretaries will have to sort that out, I guess. I'll see what I can do. We can manage it for it. Thank you very much. Very good. No other questions of Lisa or Hillary? No? Okay, so we just put one or two in the Mayor and Deputy. Uh, could I have a move, please? Councillor Williamson, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Karen, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
5.8's mission on the future of local government reform. Yeah, we've got the voice. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Afternoon, your worship and councillors. Uh, Andrew's going to take the lead on this one. Awesome. Good on you, Andrew. Afternoon, councillors. Afternoon, your worship. Best um, there we go. Awesome. So we've uh, prepared the, the submission for you on the future for local government. Um, and this afternoon, we're seeking your know, resolution for you guys to adopt uh, that submission. We're happy to take any questions um, or if there are any changes that need to be made. Um, please let us know. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor Shepherd. Uh, more of a statement. Um, we've read quite a few submissions lately, as you know. Um, I really like the submission. I think you've captured the frustration we feel, but it's in a uh, very professional layout. Picked up on the tokenism of the use of the word local. Uh, I just really wanted to, um, to, to to pass that on. Just I think you did a really good job of the submission. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Any other comments, questions, Councillor Greenslade? Yes, I'd just like to support Councillor uh, Shepard on that, on the very straightforward and direct language that you used <coughs> in that submission, which we did talk about at the time, and reading through it, it's very clear. Good. Thank you, Councillor Greenslade. Any other comments? Councillor Lockman? Uh, not to be unhelpful. So, yeah, we've, we've had a bit of a conversation earlier around um, the, the example of the cyclone, when, when things aren't looked after locally. And I was wondering whether that could be reflected in, in the submission. Just throw that out there. For comment? Uh, yeah, I believe we did touch yeah. on that in the submission. Very good. Andrew, sounds right. And Nick, you sounds like you captured it all. Well done. There's time for everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't get a start. <laughs> okay, can I have a move, please? Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Seeing them both, Councillor Greenslade, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carry. Thank you, gentlemen. 5.9, 2022 to 2025, Hawke's Bay Regional Triennial, Triennial Agreement. Andrew? Yeah, not moving. Welcome back. Yeah. Um, again, pretty procedural. Um, resolution for you uh, this afternoon on the triennial agreement. We're still waiting for the Waikato uh, triennial agreement. There's a bit of a delay going on with that and that's expected to take some more time and not be adopted before that 2nd of March deadline. Um, so we've only got the Hawke's Bay one, unfortunately, at this stage. Um, as soon as we receive the final version from Waikato, we'll be back with that as well. Um, so this afternoon, we just want a resolution to adopt that training agreement from the Hawks Bay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pretty happy with that too. Yeah. Do you have a member, please? Thank you, Councillor Taylor, Senior Vice Councillor Park. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. All those against? Carried. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, 5.10. Council engagements, March 2023. Um, we've got a couple of requests there. Oh. Shani. Oh, no, Karen. Karen. Hello, Karen. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Um, so there's just been a couple of updates to report on this. Uh, so the first one being that on Tuesday, the 7th of March, the capital expenditure program for the 2023-24 annual plan year will actually be the first item at 10 a.m. and then after that we'll follow with annual plan workshops. You'll have a bit of a break for lunch and get straight back into it again. So it'll be a quite a heavy workshop day, but riveting stuff. Um, so then moving on from there, um, the 10th of March meeting for Te Kōpua Kanapanapa is likely to be rescheduled and we haven't had advice yet on what day that will be, but you will that in the diary. Uh, and then what's the other thing I have to say? Oh, so the other things to note for the, on this report is that the Mangakino Pokani representative group recommended that 
Councillor Kirsty Truman be the uh, representative on the Emergency Management Committee. So we just need to formally appoint that, uh, formally appoint Councillor Truman. And the last thing is just with regards to training and conference opportunities. So that will be another recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Excellent. Um, okay, so that's, that's actual diary engagement. And then there's a, a couple of requests there. Um, Councillor Lena, correct? Rural Leaders Agribusiness agri and Councillor Campbell. Any questions or queries on those attendances? No, all pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, Councillor Green. I just wanted to ask about the um, the budget, and you talked about the year, the remaining budget for the 2023 year. That takes us through to the 31st of March, does it? This 31st of March? No. What's the what's the what year are you talking about? That we're talking. The 14 and a half thousand. Yeah, that's the year. 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 Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah. Oh, is it just a newbie comment? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. No problems at all. All right. Thank you very much. One, two, three, and four. Do I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Williamson, seconded by Councillor Lachlan. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carry. Right. Just uh, that is the end of the public part of the meeting. Do I have a move into confidence, please? Thank you, Councillor Rankin, seconded by Councillor Lachlan. All, the, uh, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carried.